My name is Massa, also known as Kenya Queen, and welcome to another one of my videos. Today, we're going to be talking about the SAT subject test, also known as the SAT 2 test. tell you is going to necessarily work for you 100%. If it works for you, great, wonderful, go ahead and use it. If it doesn't work for you, take it with a grain of salt. I am an ongoing sophomore in the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, which is one of the eight Ivy League institutions in the United States of America, and also the best one. The SAT 2s are a different type of test. Now these are tests that go according to a specific subject. Reminder that the people who make the SAT tests are the same people who make the AP exams. So they have a similar structure. They are about an hour long each and they test on a specific subject. Now the SAT subject tests that help to assess you on a specific subject. There are 20 different subjects that you can take the exam on. Anywhere from science to history to languages. So the list goes on and on. Now I would highly I suggest that you take these exams as they are extremely useful and not only that but they'll save you a lot of money in the long run. They are multiple times throughout the year. It just really depends on when you want to take them and when you feel most comfortable. The summer following your junior year and the fall of your senior year are the best times to take them as these exams mostly mimic the AP exams. So if you take them immediately after taking the AP exams, that information will still be fresh in your head. Not only that, the structure is similar, so you won't really feel like you're having to study for more than one test. You'll be studying for your AP exams, and as well, you'll be studying for these exams. So it would save you time, energy, and effort. Study smart, don't study hard, okay? These tests are also very useful in the college application process, but not even for that, for also if you'd like to get some courses out of the way for general requirements or for just being able to skip some courses that you might not like or information that you might already have. A lot of students need them if they're applying to more selective institutions. They're not required, but they highly suggest, which means require, that you take at least two of these exams. Which exams did I take? I took chemistry and I took math too. I took AP chemistry and I also took AP Calculus BC, so I felt like those are concepts that I was already familiar with and strong in. I got an 800 on my math and I got a 740 on my chemistry exam. How do you study for exams like this? I have a whole video as to how to study for the SAT, which I will tell you over here. And you can learn from that video a whole bunch of different tips on how to study for it, which you will study somewhat similarly to the way that you would study for these exams. Even though they're a little differently, I'm still gonna offer you the same basic tips. You don't need to take the test multiple times, you just need to take as many simulations of the test as possible. There are a ton of prep books that you can find on Amazon, half price books. Some of them even in your local library will have the prep books necessary to study for these exams. And just go through and just take practice exams in timed conditions, go back, revise your own test, go back and see what you missed, all of those things, until you get a score that you're comfortable with. And then once you've gotten a score on the exams that you're comfortable with or close to a score that you're comfortable with, then go take the actual exam, skip all the hassle, get your score on the first try, be done. What if I didn't take AP exams or I didn't take AP classes, how should I prep for these types of exams? I would say that your best bet would be to take subject tests that you feel strongest in. Not necessarily the ones you like the most. If the ones that you like the most happen to be the ones you're strongest in, wonderful. For me, I personally loved Spanish. I still love Spanish. I loved English. When I was taking my practices at home, I realized that I just was not as strong in those subject tests as I was in the courses themselves. Whereas, as much as I didn't like math and I wasn't fond of chemistry as much, I realized that when it came to testing and stuff like that, I was very good with them because they're pattern based and I'm very good with patterns. Because of the structure of those subjects, I picked those over the ones I liked because of the fact that I would do better on them. It's in your best interest to show that you're capable of understanding a topic rather than showing that these topics are necessarily the ones you like the best. If the ones you like the best are the ones you do best in, wonderful. If that is not the case, Take the tests of which you will do the best in. That's why you're taking these exams. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. If you felt like this was helpful to you or that you learned anything at all from this video, I'd love to hear about it below in the comments. And I'd also love to see a thumbs up so that I can make more videos like this and know that these are things that you guys enjoy. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to have more videos about subjects and get notified about my videos concerning subjects like this, for example, how to do your college essays, your personal statement, 
how to get good recommendations, when to start applying, when to finish applying so that you don't do it last minute, what to do after being deferred, how to figure out which school you want to apply to early decision or early action, what those things even mean, all of that good stuff is going to be coming up in the future. So if you want to know about all those videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Once again, my name is Vanessa, also known as Kenyan Queen, and thank you for watching this video. T-T-Y-L-X-O-X. -X.